Hello, welcome to my tech fun. Big Tree Tech sent me a Pad 7 for the testing, and I tried to put some life into my old NDS3 V2, which has quite a lot of upgrades. Most important are these linear rails on all three axes. Now, what is this Pad 7? It is some kind of mini computer with a clipper screen, and it will take over the control over this printer. But what's the problem with the stock printer? Well, nothing, it works fine, but Clipper has quite a lot of advantages compared to the Marlin. First of all, the most popular, higher speeds. Thanks to that uh, input chain ping vibration compensation, it can work on higher acceleration and speeds and uh, without losing the quality. Clipper has other advantages too, like uh, easy connection to the camera, network control with the printer, so you don't have to use the SD card, but basically you have much more control over the printing. Now, this product is on the market maybe 10 months now, so this will not be a detailed installation tutorial. Instead, I will just show you a few main steps, but mostly I'm curious what can I do with the old Marlin printer. Those installation steps are quite simple, only at this moment I'm not sure how easy it is to realize them. First of all, I have to connect to the network, because some things I have to do over my laptop and I'm connected to the Pad7 over the network. One of them is actually preparing a new firmware for CD printer, and uh, at this moment I'm not really sure, will that uh, firmware be prepared by the PET7 or over my laptop? Anyway, uh, probably I have to copy it to the SD card because this printer has the bootloader. I just have to insert the SD card with that new firmware and it will be flashed. And after this I have to prepare the configuration file, you know, for the clipper. It is just a textual file, but I can see on the internet, that on the GitHub page, uh, there are quite a lot of prepared ones even for the NDS3 V2, only from the stock it is a little bit different uh, because it uses the CR touch for the leveling and it is a different ratio of this extruder, but it is very easy to modify in the rotation distance for the extruder. Now let's see what's in the box. This was content of the box, this is the main unit, the rubber duct, which is typical for the Big 3 Tech, the power supply unit with output of 12 volts and 2 amperes, SD card reader cable from, for accelerometer, power adapter, screws, and I'm not sure what is this, but not really the user manual, and I check on their website, they are linked to the GitHub page, where we can see very detailed user manual about this, but not for beginners, so it's more about the hardware, how can we replace the CM4 unit and uh, how can we write the image file and similar, but not beginner guide for step by step. This is the main unit. On the left side, 3.5 mm audio jack volume buttons. On the right side, USB plug, USB type C. There is a micro SD card with Prainstar clipper on it. On the back side, DC input, USB plugs, network connection, CAN and SPI bus and uh, this is for connection of the accelerometer and I think we can use only one at a time. And this is the first time when I turn it on and this is the first thing the user will see when it turns on, the error message. And this is not the best solution. I'm familiar with this but beginner users will be very confused with this. I have to mention with the Sonic Pad we have nice uh, installation guide here, but of course it is mostly for Creality printers. Okay, so the first step is connected to the network. Hmm, interesting, the router is only 3 meters from here and it couldn't connect. Five simple steps and I stuck even on the first one. So I tried uh, three different networks, 5 GHz, 2.5 GHz, different routers. I even tried to use my smartphone to share the mobile network, but in most cases it doesn't even connect. Now when I'm connected over the network cable, I can see it is connected and there is the IP address and I could successfully connect to the IP address over the browser. Let's try to do these updates. Maybe it will work with the Wi-Fi connection later. I'm not sure. I can see the screen change now. It's a little bit different. And finally, everything is up to date. And I could even connect to my Wi-Fi network. There is the IP address. I enter here my IP address and I can see this user interface on my laptop. 
I will start with printer configuration file. As you can see, it is empty, only two lines, because they don't know which printer we want to use. On Clipper GitHub page, we have a list of printers. And I was thinking uh, to use, uh, this is the NDS 3 v 2 but uh, then I found this NDS 3 v 2 Neo, basically it is the same, it used the same 4.2.2 uh, .2 board like mine, but also it has pre-installed the uh, sear touch, so probably I don't have to mess with that. Of course, I still have to change the rotation distance for the extruder, but I'll try to use this one. Copy. Save and restart. In next important step, I'm preparing the new flash bin file from CD printer. And actually, I'm just following the instructions from the Yogi Tech. I'm using here the PuDDY to prepare this bin file. And finally, this firmware bin file is generated and I copy it over my laptop to this SD card. And very important, this is a separate SD card, not the one which arrived with the PET7. And now inserting the SD card to printer and actually I don't need this adapter anymore. I installed this earlier because I hate these small SD cards for daily use for transferring the files. Turning on the printer and I have to wait a few minutes until the firmware is flashed. And from that on I cannot use this screen anymore because I will use the clipper screen. I was waiting a few minutes just to be sure that the firmware is updated. I can turn it off. Take out the SD card. And now I have to connect the PET7 with CD printer. And for this I have to use my own cable because it didn't arrive with the cables. But of course they don't know which printer you want to use. For NSCB2 I'm using the USB to micro USB cable. Now I can turn the printer on, but one more thing I have to do before these two things can communicate with each other. And that is copying of the USB serial address into the Clipper's configuration file. I don't want to delete the old one, I will just make the line inactive, save and restart. And when I go back to the dashboard, I cannot see those error messages anymore, but uh, panel for countering the printer. And finally the Clipper screen, which I'm familiar with, and uh, I will start with the homing, home all. Okay, let's try to move the axis. Let's move it higher a little bit. Let's try to change the temperatures. 60 on the nozzle and 30 on the bed. Okay, it's heating. Oh, it overshoots the temperature. Of course, this is very low temperature. Probably it is set for higher temperatures, but definitely I will run some PID tuning on 200 degrees Celsius. It's time to speed up the things a little bit more and first important thing is to clean the printer. And then after the first homing I'm starting with the leveling. I'm setting the Z offset, actually it's called the Z calibrate. I'm using the paper friction method. After this I disabled the stepper motors and did the manual bed leveling because I want to make this bed parallel with the moving pad of the nozzle. But actually for this we have these buttons, I forgot about it. And uh, if I press it then it will move to that point automatically. And after this I started the automatic bed leveling, it is called bed mesh in this clipper screen. It will create some offset mesh and I can see it, the bed is warped but it will be compensated during the printing. And this is the accelerometer, here you can see the, its position on the y-axis and this is on the x-axis. Of course these few lines I had to add into the printer configuration file. It is time to insert some filaments, but very important thing I have to do is to set the rotation distance. In Marlin it will be called E-steps. I mark this line on 120 mm and I calculate the length of the extrusion and the real length. And after a few settings attempts uh, I can see now it is set correctly. I prepared a G-code in the Cura and I'm uploading it over the web interface. And it will be a calibration cube. Here you can see the first line. We have a lot of setting possibilities with this printer. And when the printing is finished, this is the first layer, the top layer. The top layer is not nice, but there is no ghosting, so the side walls are good. Not perfect, but quite good. And of course the bench was the next object. This is I think the second layer. This was approximately 38 minute bench which includes the heat up time. Not completely perfect, I can see some spots. The overhang is okay. I can see some uh, seam slide here on the corner. The bridging is not completely perfect. Uh, as you can see the clipper really needs some fine tuning after installation. 
Now some conclusions. Well, I think this is not really for beginner users, maybe not even for the average ones. I can see this from the user manual, but for their luck, actually, there are great YouTube videos now by other users. And now even the average user can follow those videos and install this more or less without any problems. The Wi-Fi connectivity is not super stable, but I need the connection only until I upload the G-code from my laptop to the Pad 7. And after this, everything, uh, all the fine tuning and control, I can do it from this big screen. Was it worth it? Well, I think yes. I mean, I got the Clipper as machine now. The speed is approximately two times bigger, but uh, with a similar quality. The go there is no ghosting, so with this the Clipper is really good. But I can see a little bit um, other problems. The seams lines are not perfect and uh, there are some bridging problems, but uh, this all requires a little bit fine tuning in a Clipper. So again, not for beginner users, but average user can again follow those videos and um, he probably knows what to do. Now, I probably reached the possibilities of this machine because I tried one 27-minute uh, benchy and I can see now the part cooling is not enough. Uh, those fast printers, which we can see now on the mark, uh, have some additional AUX fan and with this basically uh, they can get uh, better part cooling even on those higher speeds. So unfortunately this stock part cooling is not enough for these higher speeds. Of course, don't forget the Clipper has other advantages too. As I mentioned, the network connectivity. The best actually is if you are able to place the PET7 next to the printer, but also you can connect it with the network cable. In that case, that will be the most stable solution and you can do all, everything from your computer. The, it is very easy to connect the camera to it and uh, basically you have more control over the printer. This was my experience with the PET7 and also in one of my next videos, I will present the Panda Touch. And with this we can actually add the big screen to my P1P because I really hate that small screen on that printer. And I hope you will follow me to that video too. Until then, thank you for watching and happy printing.